All right, we've spent the last three videos building up the theory of how to go back and forth between a rational tangle and the rational number which we can use to represent that tangle. And the mediating force between those two worlds for us is the continued fraction representation for both a rational tangle and for its associated rational number. What we found out in the previous video is that not only is every rational tangle represented in a continued fraction form, so is every rational number. And also, rational numbers have what we call a canonical continued fraction form, in which all of the integers that are used have the same sign, all positive or all negative, and which the number of integers that we use to build the representation is an odd number. So the length of the continued fraction is odd. So in this video, we're finally going to get to the computational meat of how to go back and forth between those two realms. We'll see it as an example going in both directions. First, we're going to look at an example of how to turn a rational tangle into a tangle number using the continued fraction representation. And then also, secondly, how to go the other direction. If somebody hands me on the street a rational number, how do I reconstruct a rational tangle out of that number in a way in which if I construct it and if you construct it, we're both going to get the same tangle at the end of the day, at least up to isotopy. So how do we turn a rational tangle into its associated rational number? I want to start with this example of a tangle from the Kaufman and Lambropoulou paper. It's kind of a, a really juicy tangle to do a lot with because it's got a lot of action. Um, and it also is going to help us to illustrate all of the different steps uh, in the process of building the continued fraction representation for uh, uh, the tangle number of a rational tangle. So how does it work? Well, what we're going to do is look at this tangle and count the twists from the outermost parts of the tangle to the innermost parts of the tangle. So somebody handed me a pair of twist ties that were twisted together in the way that this rational tangle is twisted together. My first question is going to be, where should I start untwisting? That's going to tell me what the outermost part of the tangle is, and we're going to work our way from the outward to the inward, alternating horizontal tangles getting undone with vertical tangles getting undone. So the first place I'm going to look in this tangle is at this pair of twists over here on the right. According to the overstrands having a downward slope, we're going to call that the minus 2 tangle. And that is going to be the first entry in the continued fraction representation for this rational tangle. So I'm going to put a negative 2 there at the beginning of my notation. All right, so now imagining that I've untwisted this pair, then what's the next part of this tangle I'm going to be able to untwist? It's going to be these vertical twists down here on the bottom. Remember, we're alternating untwisting horizontal twists and untwisting vertical twists. So we're going to focus on this part next. And that part of this tangle consists of three positive twists. The upward sloping strands are going over for these, so this is a positive 3. And because they're vertical, we would call this, if it was just an isolation, we'd call it 1 over the 3 tangle. In our continued fraction representation, the continued fraction arithmetic already takes care of this reciprocal, so we're just going to write a 3. We don't need to keep that reciprocal as part of the notation. All right, so now imagining that I've untwisted these, now I'm going to have a situation where I've got some twists on the left and some twists on the right, and I could choose to undo either one to get my process going. And here is where our key observation from a couple of videos comes in, that those twists which are on the left and the right can be combined together with one another because flipes. Right? Because I can apply a flipe to this subtangle, and by flipping horizontally, I could move these crossings, these twists that are on the left side, I could move them over here to the right side so that they can combine together with the twists that are over here. So rather than think about them in isolation, I'm just going to choose to take the negative 3 tangle, which is over here on the left, and just flip it over the rest of the subtangle so that it joins together with those positive 4 twists that are over there on the right. And when that's done, I can then notice that some Reitermeister type 2 unpoking moves can actually combine the 4 positive twists that are now adjacent to the 3 negative twists, and actually 3 of those 4 twists could undo one another, because these twists have the opposite orientation to one another. So I end up with a total, after applying these unpoking maneuvers, a total of just one positive twist over here on the right. Another way to think about what we've just done is to think about it as a flight. In this original diagram, just imagine turning this middle part around like a top, and it'll untwist some of these three over here, while at the same time it's going to untwist three of these four over here, so that I'm only left with a single positive twist on the right side. So this one is then going to become the next entry in my continued fraction. And then I've untwisted both this set of twists on the left and that set of twists on the right. And now I just have this complex here in the middle. That complex in the middle has some top twists as well as some bottom twists. So there again, 
we're going to use a vertical flip to combine these twists from the top down with the twists on the bottom. The top had a negative one vertical twist, the bottom had a negative two vertical twist, so when I combine them together, we end up combining them into negative three vertical twists, making the next entry in my continued fraction negative three. Now the only piece of my tangle which is still twisted up is this piece here, which consists of three negative twists, and that makes them the last entry in my continued fraction. So what I secretly have here now is I have a continued fraction representation of the rational tangle. I just didn't put the little brackets around each of my numbers. But we agreed that how we can build a tangle number is just by taking away those brackets and considering this to be a continued fraction in the rational numbers, which we can now simplify just by remembering how continued fraction notation works. This is really negative 2 plus the reciprocal of 3 plus the reciprocal of 1 plus the reciprocal of negative 3 plus the reciprocal of negative 3. This thing. And then, through a series of arithmetic maneuvers, uh, we can check that this is actually equal to the rational number, negative 55 over 31. And then we will call that number the tangle number, or the fraction, which is the, the language that Conway used in the 60s and 70s when he was first introducing this idea, the fraction associated with this rational tangle, negative 55 over 31. So the key here is working from the outside in, and just counting the number of twists that we have at each stage. Where if I have twists on the left and right at the same time, I'll combine those together by flipping. Same thing with top and the bottom, combine them together by flipping. And through an iterative series of working our way inwards, we'll eventually arrive at the continued fraction representation of the tangle, which we can then associate with a continued fraction representation of a rational number, which we can simplify. All right, so how about the other direction? Suppose somebody comes up to me on the street and hands me a rational number, like 29 over 12. How do I take that rational number and associate it with a rational tangle in the same way that we just learned how to undo, how to associate a rational number with a rational tangle? So the key here, again, is the role of the continued fraction representation in mediating that relationship. So if I want to go from rational number to rational tangle, my intermediate step should be to figure out what rational expression as a continued fraction can I write down for the number 29 over 12. And it's best if I can come up with a way to do that canonically that will give me the canonical continued fraction of this. Um, that way, when you and I write down the tangle diagrams at the end of this process, we're going to get the same tangle diagram, not just up to isotopy and right of moves, but it can be exactly the same as one another. So we know that we're both seeing the same tangle. That's the value of having one agreed upon best representative of continued fractions in the form of the canonical form. So to find the canonical form of a rational number's continued fraction, We'll use an algorithm that looks an awful lot like the Euclidean algorithm for the divisibility of integers, where what we're going to do is successively take quotients and remainders, and we'll report out the sequence of quotients that we get in the process. And the only extra step that we add in is, in between remainder and quotient, we'll take a reciprocal. So we're really just kind of unwinding the continued fraction that would be associated with 29 over 12. So with 29 over 12, what that would look like is first taking the quotient of 29 when we divide it by 12. That quotient is 2. 2 plus 5 twelfths. And then peeling off that remainder, 5 twelfths, taking its reciprocal, 12 fifths, and then repeating the process. So 12 fifths, there the quotient, 12 over 5, the quotient is going to give me 2 plus 2 fifths. Peel off the remainder, 2 fifths, take the reciprocal, 5 halves. Then repeat the process with 5 halves, whose quotient is also 2, whose remainder is 1 half, peel that off, take its reciprocal. That gives me the whole number 2, and as you might expect, that's where the process ends up terminating, because there the remainder is going to be 0, and the quotient is going to be 2. So this algorithm has given me a continued fraction for 29 over 12, which is 2, 2, 2, 2. Notice all of the numbers were positive. If we had started out with a negative value for x, um, then at each stage of the game, instead of thinking of my quotients as positive and my remainders as positive, we would need to do an extra mental gymnastics to think of my remainders as always being negative. Um, but that's going to make sure that we always get the same sign for every one of the numbers which is used to build our continued fraction. But this isn't quite in its canonical form yet, because this has an even length to its continued fraction. To fix that, we'll just take this last entry, this 2, and split it by peeling off a 1. So we'll split off a 1 and make those last two entries 1 and 1. So the canonical continued fraction representation for the rational number, 29 twelfths, is 2, 2, 2, 1, 1. And now, we have a roadmap for how to build a tangle whose continued fraction representation as a tangle will be the same, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1. To construct that tangle, 
All we have to do is remind ourselves how a continued fraction representation for a tangle rebuilds itself into a tangle, just by reversing the process that we did earlier in this video. So what would the tangle 2, 2, 2, 1, 1 look like? Well, as a continued fraction, it would look like this, right? 2 plus the reciprocal of 2 plus the reciprocal of 2 plus the reciprocal of 1 plus the reciprocal of 1. And unwinding that to build a tangle, according to the order of operations, thinking algebraically about this, according to the order of operations, the first tangle, the first building block, would have to be this innermost tangle down here on the bottom. That's where we're going to start building our tangle. Just by finding that innermost piece, we're going to start with that positive 1. Another way to think about it is to re-express it using the addition and multiplication of twists that have been building our entire arithmetic structure around tangles uh, for this series of videos. That the first thing we would do is take a one tangle and then attach on the bottom a one tangle. And then to that combination, we would attach on the right two twists. And then to that, we would attach two twists on the bottom. And then to that, we would attach two more twists on the right. So this is just, again, unwinding the arithmetic that led us to the continued fraction representation. Now let's draw the diagram, because this is, of course, the most fun part of all. Following the order of operations again, we'll start from that innermost twist, which is a positive 1. So I'll just sketch it right there. And from there, I'll add on the bottom a 1 twist, another positive 1 twist. And I actually want to pause right here to make an observation. Notice that the effect of taking one twist and then adding a one twist on the bottom, we can't actually tell that this gray twist here was originally a vertical twist, or it could also have just been a, hor a horizontal or a vertical twist in the beginning, right? Because in the end, what we really have is a series of two vertical twists here at the end. We can see that in the arithmetic by noting that here in this, in this last denominator, 1 plus 1 over 1 is just going to give me positive 2. Right? And so the reciprocal of positive 2 ends up being how we started this twist. So that, by the way, is a reflection of the fact that in a continued fraction we can always split that last entry to peel off an extra 1. That's the tangle reason why that works. All right, now we've built out to here, to this part of the tangle, so our next step is to tack two twists on the right. Two positive twists, there they are. And now we've built it out to there. Now we need to add two positive twists on the bottom. By add, I really mean multiply, right? We just need to introduce two positive twists on the bottom. Now we've built it out to here. Then our last step is to introduce two positive twists on the right. And now we're done. So continued fractions are the bridge in between the world of rational tangles, which rational tangles can be really scary and messy, but according to what we talked about in this series of videos today, they can all be expressed and thought of as a series of combinations of right twists and bottom twists added to an empty tangle. And because of that, every rational tangle, no matter how messy, we can flip all of its left twists to the right, top twist to the bottom, and get a continued fraction representation for that rational tangle. That we then associate with the same continued fraction representation for its associated rational number. And that gives us a recipe for going in both directions.